So I have uh, a bunch of beakers of water, right? And just like last time, uh, on, if you open up the instruction sheet, it just says, I'll, I'll read it to you, um, fill beakers with water, obtain various materials, see if they sink or float, and um, stir it and see if it dissolves in the water. That's it. The challenge with this lab is that um, most of the liquid, well, all of the liquids are clear and colorless. Um, I got a different kind of oil that's colored so that we could actually see it uh, a little bit easier. But for the other five liquids, uh, plus the water, they're, they're all, they all look like water. So it's a little bit challenging to see whether they mix or not, or whether it sinks to the bottom or not. So we'll, we'll see what we can. Um, and I'll hold it really close to the camera so we can see what we can do. All right, so on the data sheet, the first material that we're going to combine with water is ethanol. So I have here a squirt bottle of ethanol, which is uh, flammable, as you may note there with the hazard symbol. Um, this is drinking alcohol. This is if your age and religion permit. So this is just regular old drinking alcohol, but 100% uh, been distilled, which gets you to about 90 plus percent. And then there's a chemical process or, or molecular sieves to remove the last of the water. That's why um, 200 proof alcohol is so expensive because it's, it's challenging to get. When you boil the alcohol, yes, it is like moonshine, but I'm not gonna drink it. Um, never drink anything that came out of the lab. Um, in fact, I'm going on my safety goggles because I don't want it in my eye. Um, uh, if you just, if you like, you can boil the water out of salt water, but if you try and boil the water out of uh, ethanol in water, uh, you get to a certain point where you can't. Uh, it's beyond the chemistry scope of the class, but um, it, it's something called a eutectic, where you you get about ten percent and nine ten percent water, ninety percent alcohol, and that's what boils out. Um, and you, you just can't do any better than that physically. Um, chemically, there are other ways of getting around it. So let me ask, is the alcohol going to sink, float, or be indeterminate? You, you won't be able to tell. Now you could, if you wanted to, go back to your lab uh, one instruction sheet and check the density of ethanol. Yeah, ethyl alcohol, ethanol, is on the list. So one person says sink, nine people say float, and 11 people say we're not going to be able to tell because they're probably thinking about beer and other mixed drinks where alcohol and water mix. It's really hard to tell. So yeah, I don't think we're necessarily going to be able to see. We'll, I'll hold it up as close to the camera as possible and we'll see if we can and tell. Um, but ethyl alcohol has a density of 0.789, so it should float, except we already know there's a solubility part of the experiment that they mix. So um, we, won't, we probably won't be able to tell. All right, so I'll hold up the water as close to the camera as I can, and I'm going to really gently squirt some ethanol on top, and we'll see if we can tell if it's sinking to the bottom or floating, or if we can't tell anything. I can see some little lines. It's called a Schleiren pattern as the ethanol is hitting the water, but I can't really tell if it's going to the bottom or not. So it's definitely indeterminate. But what we know for sure is there's no two layers there. This is definitely just one smooth, continuous face. Stir it, and definitely not two layers. So on our data sheets, right, the instructions say to put, does it mix with water or does it not mix with the water? And your result then is, uh, sorry, does it disappear or does it form a second layer? So the ethanol definitely just disappeared, right? It mixed with the water, it disappeared. So then you, your result is that this is miscible with water. It kind of sounds like mixable, and that's what it really means. 
ethanol and water mix. Ethanol is miscible with water. It just results in one layer. Cheers. No, I'm not going to get it. All right. If you want to go ahead and jump down to the second table, we'll just do that. For, we'll do both tables for each one as we run through. The ethanol, we couldn't tell. Right? It, we really could not tell. I could see the Schleiren pattern, the little wavy lines, as the ethanol was hitting the water. But I really couldn't tell if it was staying on top or going to the bottom. You know, I was squirting it in there as gently as I could, and it was just swirling around in there. Some of it was going to the bottom, and then it was just gone. I couldn't tell. So I would put for my observation that there was no second layer, and I really couldn't tell if it was more dense or less dense than water. We can look it up. It is less dense than water, but the experiment couldn't tell us, right? The experiment could not tell us whether ethanol is more or less dense than water. If that was the only compound we were studying this week, the experiment would have been a failure. Our conclusion would be this experiment would work for determining the density of ethanol because we couldn't tell anything. Observations and results are indeterminate? Yeah, I think so. For the, for the second part, for ethanol, for the second table, the, the density study? Yeah, I, I really couldn't tell. I was looking clear, carefully. I thought maybe I could float the ethanol on top before it mixed in, but it, I couldn't tell. There was definitely some of it that went to the bottom just by the act of me squirting it in there with the squirt bottle as gently as I could. You guys getting the difference between results and conclusion there? You know, our result is we couldn't tell anything. Our conclusion, if this lab was just about ethanol, would be that this experiment doesn't work. We can't determine the density of ethanol this way. But we're gonna do some other stuff. So I think in the end, the experiment probably will work. All right, methanol is wood alcohol or, uh, um, or, or methyl alcohol. This stuff is barely chemically different from ethanol. Ethyl alcohol, the drinking alcohol, is C, I'm writing left-handed with a mouse, so forgive me for going so slow. CH3, because my tablet, for some reason, I can't get my cursor to go over to the screen. CH2, and then an OH. That's what makes it an alcohol, is that there's an OH in the molecule. You're not responsible for knowing this structure. This O is attached to the C. Right, so that C is attached to these two H's, that O, and it's attached to this other C as well. That's the drinking alcohol. For the methanol, the wood alcohol, we just take this out. That's the difference. Right? That's gone. The OH is attached to the CH3. That's methanol. It is not very chemically different. Smells very similar, looks very similar, both clear, colorless liquids look just like water, but wood alcohol, 10 milliliters of this, okay? Here's a 20, here's the 20 milliliter beaker. 10 milliliters, this much, will permanently blind you if you drink it. You, little shot, 10 milliliters of methanol, you are blind forever, which is a real problem if somebody, you know, uh, not feeling so great about their life, picks up a bottle of like floor cleaner or something, sees it's got alcohol in it and is like, you know, I need to get wasted and, and drinks it because they're, they're going to go blind. And this happens a lot. Not so much in this country where alcohol is, is readily available, but uh, you know, more so in, around the world, people drink bottles labeled alcohol or mislabeled ethanol and end up permanently blind. And the, the real perhaps more severe issue is 100 milliliters, just be careful, 100 milliliters will kill you. And you, know, you can swig that down with no problem and be dead. So small chemical difference, massive biological difference. All right, let's see 
Um, I don't think that methanol is on our list of, of uh, the, the table, was it? Let's see, was methyl alcohol, it is on there? I'm looking for it. No, I know it's on our data sheet table. I, I'm talking about table 1.1, last week's uh, density table. I don't think methyl alcohol is on there. Anyway, you could you could Google it and see what is the density of methanol. But chemical properties similar, disregard the massive biological differences. I'm betting that the physical properties are also very similar. So let, I'll pour it in as carefully as I can and see if I can tell if it's sinking or floating. But uh, I don't have high hopes. All right, I'll just add a little touch in there. That one, actually, I could, uh, it looked like it stayed on the top more than going to the bottom. It's definitely, though, still just one layer. There's not two layers. It definitely mixed. Missibility, top part. Definitely did, did disappear. To me, it looked like it stayed on the top before it disappeared. But it's really, really hard to say. I, I don't know that I would, you know, bet my life on it or anything for the second table. Could I tell if it floated before it mixed in? Not really. More than the ethanol, but not really. So that's methanol. Boot. Yeah, it, it is definitely missable. And as far as determining its density, I couldn't really tell. You can Google it and check it. It's, it's definitely around 0.7 something. But yeah, I agree that the density is indeterminate. All right, third up on the list is what we use in the lab to clean stuff all the time. Acetone, which is also a clear colorless liquid, if you can see in the bottle, clear colorless liquid that is flammable. But this you cannot drink. This will really mess you up. Just like the, the methanol. Um, I'm not, actually, I, I've never checked to see. I don't think that this is quite as toxic. Uh, no, benzene is completely different. Um, benzene would be a nice one to put on the list. Um, uh, it, it's just a, a, a little bit. I mean, the methanol and acetone are toxic too. Um, benzene is, yeah, I mean, I've, I've absolutely used it in the lab. Um, it's more like gasoline and mineral oil where in, in terms of its physical properties. Um, but uh, no, it's not just another name for acetone. Uh, benzene's great at removing paint and things like that too. It's just more, um, more toxic than acetone in terms of con skin contact. Acetone, you wouldn't want to drink it, but getting it on your skin, eh, not so bad. All right, let's check its miscibility. Right. I'm pretty sure acetone is on the list. Let me just check. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's used as paint thinner. And yeah, you, if I, I keep a bottle of it you know, in the cleaning closet just to... Uh, Clean up random stuff. <laughs> All right, here we go. So there's your bottle. There's your cup of water. I'll try and see if I can get it to go on top. I don't know if you guys can see the little wavy lines, but they are definitely, most of them are at the top of the beaker, but some of them are swirling around to the bottom, even though I'm squeezing it in very gently. But what's definitely clear is that there's no two layers. It definitely disappeared it mixed in with the water. So even though if it doesn't mix with water, we use acetone to clean it up in the lab, water and acetone mix. That's kind of interesting. You can't remove your nail polish with water, but you can remove it with acetone and yet water and acetone mix. Why? things mix, I wrote this in the introduction, is a whole other story that we don't get into. Um, but does absolutely have environmental impacts. 
You know, if we dump acetone in water, it's going to just mix right in. If I can dissolve paint in the acetone and then the acetone mixes with the water, it's a way of getting the paint to mix in with the water. Good if you're trying to wash it off your hands. Bad if you're a fish who's swimming in some body of water that now has paint in it with acetone in it because they're not water. All right. So again, uh, for the second study of density, acetone, it's a little hard to say. I thought that maybe there were a little more wavy lines at the top than at the bottom, but they were definitely some at the bottom too, as, as it was mixing together. So I don't know if we could say. All right, good. Next up on our list was supposed to be mineral oil, but mineral oil is clear and colorless. So instead, the guys in the stock room gave me cottonseed oil. So change your data sheet from mineral, which is a little harder to see because it's not yellow, to cottonseed oil, which is yellow. I have a Another poll question for you. Let me clear the responses from last time. Is the cottonseed oil going to sink, float, or be indeterminate? Because it's going to mix. What do you think? What do you think? Swirl it around for you, see if that helps you decide. Just looks like oil, because that's what it is. Motor oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, cottonseed oil. Uh, by a 25 to 75% margin per float, one person says they're not going to be able to tell. All right, Think about an oil spill in the ocean or salad dressing in your refrigerator, oil and water oil and vinegar. Challenge with oil spills, and we'll talk about this in the water chapter, is that oil floats. And so birds and, you know, the fish don't got to worry about it because the oil's not in, down in the water, but coastal creatures do have to worry about it because oil floats. And um, oil companies have been figuring out ways to try and fix that. So one of the last major, major oil spills in the Gulf Coast they added uh, something known as a surfactant to the oil. And all the oil that was floating on the top of the ocean, because it floats even better in salt water, because salt water is more dense than regular water, all the oil floating on the top mixed with the surfactant became more dense and sank. And, all, and the oil companies and the public were like, great, no oily uh, birds on the coast to make us cry and you know, no, no cl cleanup but it sank to the bottom. The oil was still there. It just sank and decimated the crab fishing industry in the Gulf Coast for years. So out of sight, out of mind for some people, but it, spilling oil in the ocean is bad news. It's hard to clean up no matter what. Either you gotta skim it off the top or you gotta you know, surfactant it, make it sink and suck it off the bottom. Um, but you're, you're going to do some serious environmental damage. So best if we can find alternatives to fossil fuels. Let's see what happens when I add the cottonseed oil to the water, as my grandmother used to say. All right. And boop. when I added it, I get my fingers out of the way. Boop. You know, it splashed to the bottom just because of gravity and as, as I was pouring it in. But then look, yellow on top. I'll mix it. It affords those little bubbles because the oil and the water really don't mix well at all. That's why you have to shake the hell out of your salad dressing. But when I stop stirring it, The water sinks, 
and the cottonseed oil floats. And if I give it another, I mean, it, there's still water mixed in with the oil, so it looks a little gross at the moment. But I'll set it aside and we'll come back to it. They don't mix. That oil is floating because it's less dense. Oops, I'm giving you away the, away the answers. Right, the oil is on top. It did form a second layer. Did not mix with the water. Table one, answered. Table two, answered. If you look at the very, very top, you can see that the oil has no water mixed in it. Still at the bottom, there's a little bit of water mixed in it, but it's definitely separating. Clearly two layers, water, oil. All right, next up, what do we got? Ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate. That's a, a class, it's in a class of organic molecules uh, called esters. Esters are, are most famous in, in food additives as things that um, make, make things smell a certain way. So um, like uh, oil of wintergreen, it has a, uh, an ester in it. Um, banana oil has an ester in it. They're, they're very potent um, uh, odorants. Ethyl acetate um, is also used as a um, as a paint remover. Um, it's a really good solvent. Again, for things that don't mix with water particularly well, you can use ethyl acetate. The question is, clear colorless liquid, will our ethyl acetate mix with water or not? And we're gonna have to look really carefully to determine whether it sinks or whether it floats if it doesn't mix with water. I have to pour this all over my keyboard. I really should be doing this in the lab, but next time. All right, I'm just gonna, um, this has a very uh, pungent odor. It smells, um, uh, if anybody ever uh, like did any sort of like uh, airplane models or car modeling or whatever, uh, this smells like the glue that you use to put together a plastic model. Um, because this is a, a nice organic solvent, it, 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 it dissolves glues and things like that, but then it evaporates ready, readily. So it's a, it's a primary component of, uh, of a lot of modeling glues. Um, it's a VOC, which you may have heard about, a volatile organic compound. It, it evaporates very readily, um, which is not so great for the environment. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of it, and we'll see if it goes to the top or to the bottom, or if it disappears. And here we go. Well, if you guys can tell, I'll stir it so you can see. But I'm seeing two layers. Right? If I mix it, it looks really cloudy for a second. Stop stirring it. We'll wait a minute. And if you look really carefully, I don't know if you guys can tell on the camera or not, challenge of this lab. There's water, 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 water line. And then there's something else up here. Can you guys see that at all? I don't know. Move it really, really close. Water, water, water. I'll put my finger where you guys can maybe a little see it. Water, water, water up to here, and then there's a line, and then there's more liquid. I'll add more ethyl acetate. Not going to add as much as there is water in there. Water, 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 line, ethyl acetate. It does not mix and floats just like the oil did. You can make a definite different density, so you can make these crazy little patterns. I don't know if you guys can see that at all. Turn out where it is flying. There we go. 
two layers. Ethyl acetate is on top. Cool. Show you back to our mineral oil. Still hasn't fully, fully separated, but there's definitely that yellow layer on top of the clear colorless water layer. Pretty much, other than the fact that it's not yellow, same results. Right? Didn't mix with water, floated. The uh, cottonseed oil, ethyl acetate, didn't mix with water, floated. Methylene chloride, the last one. Um, methylene chloride is like one chlorine different from, uh, from chloroform. This is CH2Cl2. So two H's and two CL's are joined to one carbon atom. If you had four H's, that would be methane, the natural gas that comes out of your stove if you have a gas stove. You pop in one chlorine, you've got uh, uh, chloroform. You pop in two, you got methylene chloride. Chloroform, of course, used to be used to uh, make people unconscious. The, you know, pour it on, it happens in the movies all the time. You pour it on a little handkerchief or something, hold it over their face, go unconscious. Um, the challenge with doing that in the doctor's office is dosing is hard to determine. And so a lot of times people wouldn't wake back up. Um, so they moved to stuff that they can control better, like propofol. And unless, you, of course, you're Michael Jackson's doctor. He didn't control his very well. Anyway, let's see methylene chloride or dichloromethane. We could look it up and see what the density of methylene chloride is. Uh, let's see what happens when we add it to water. Is it going to mix? Is it going to sink? Is it going to float? What does that tell us about the miscibility and the density? So I'll do what I always do. I'll pour it in there as slowly as I can to see if we can see what is going to happen. I don't want to use too much of this stuff because it's awful for the ozone layer. We used to use this a ton in the lab until we learned about the ozone layer problem. I don't know if you can see, there's a little boop of it in the corner of that flask. I'm going to stir it. See if I see if it's just maybe not not dissolving, not mixing because I didn't stir it. Remember, it's not a mixture until it's been stirred. No, it's still there. You guys see that? There's just a drop of methylene chloride. There you go. That you can definitely see. There's just a drop of methylene chloride sitting on the bottom of this beaker of water. It didn't mix and it sank. Methylene chloride did not mix with the water even after I stirred it and it sank even after I stirred it. Oh, no, no, there's definitely a second layer. I just didn't pour enough in it to fill the whole bottom. I, d I don't want to use that much methylene chloride. It, it, it's a definite second layer. That drop is just sitting there on the bottom. If I added more, it would form a whole, you know, it, it would fill the whole bottom of the beaker. I just don't want to waste that much of it. because it, it, Like I said, it's really bad for the ozone layer, and it's also really expensive to dispose of. Because you cannot, anything that contains chlorine, you can't burn it to dispose of it. You have to bury it no way around it and there's only so many places that'll let you bury their hazardous waste literally bury it you you we're gonna have to i'll pour off the water and get rid of the water but there's gonna um you know this is gonna go into a bottle of halogenated waste that's gonna get packed into a 55 gallon drum with vermiculite it's gonna get hauled off to idaho or someplace and literally buried in the ground i'll give you feedback on your rough draft of your lab report and then you're going to include your table's data sheet from today and your discussion of liquids dissolving miscibility and um, uh, into your introduction, into your uh, procedure, into your results, into your discussion. You're gonna integrate that. So we're having one lab on the solubility and density of solids and liquids. But next week, Different link I'll give you to turn in your final lab report, which counts as your high stake, first high stakes assignment for 110.
So really, if you haven't given me your rough draft yet, give it to me ASAP because I'll grade it as quickly as I can. But uh, you know, if you give it to me next uh, Wednesday night, I have no guarantee I'm going to grade it in time for you to turn in your high stakes assignment on time. Are we doing a rough draft for one B too? No, you're hopefully any you're the any small amount of stuff that you're going to be adding to your introduction to your procedure and things like that. You'll be able to use the feedback um, from the part that I give you on one A. Your other things will be just rough drafts, and then I'll give you feedback on the whole thing, and then you'll you'll give me the final version. But for the lab reports, it works out. Um, or at least for this lab report, it, I want to get it back to you quickly. And, and have have the second part integrated. The next time you do this with a lab report, it's going to be just a one week lab report. All right. So if you haven't turned in your rough draft, turn it in ASAP. I will look at these and get them back to you as quickly as possible. I'm for sure going to start uh, grading them uh, tonight, if not tomorrow, uh, if not definitely tomorrow morning, and get these hopefully all back to you. There's a lot of you though in here, uh, and then you're going to add. Don't give me a separate report. You're going to add the stuff about liquids to your introduction, to your procedure, to your results, to your discussion, to your conclusion. And we're going to have a lab report about solids and liquids density and miscibility, uh, solubility uh, turned in next week. Okay.